the whole thing is a bit so uh, loosely cobbled together, really, isn't it? I, you know it's what? Not I as, fit... It's not as coherent and it doesn't yeah. feel as well planned out as the Mr. Rogers stuff. English language teaching under the cover. Yeah. Oh. Hello and welcome to ELT Under The Covers Teachers React where we look at the good, the bad and the ugly of the teaching clips on the internet. Today we are looking at Mr. Dress Up, Eric Combs, aka the Canadian Mr. Rogers. But first introductions. I'm Neil of Team Teacher. Hello everybody, it's Professor Rich. We are going to give our professional opinions on um, this. Oh, sorry, not Eric Combs, Ernie Combs, Mr. Dress Up, who is like this Canadian children's television entertainer. And he was kind of he's he was friends with Mr. Rogers. And we've we've looked at that oh. video before. Um, so he's heavily influenced by him. And um, he's he's kind of known as kind of like a Canadian Mr. Rogers. So I'm, I'm interested mm -hmm. to kind of see. Uh, what he is. I don't really know that much about him apart from that whereas Mr. Rogers had kind of like this ministerial uh, background with um, uh, some education in and around of childhood development with his relationship with uh, what was his name? Margaret. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Uh, Ernie, he has a background in art. Right. Yeah. In what way were they fr were they sort of friends after the fact, or were they friends before, and then they both became these children's TV? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, mm. if you are listening to this, uh, please leave some comments below and let us know. I believe that they he was doing some sort of. Um, children's show like on uh on like cbc like the canadian public broadcasting stuff uh and um mr rogers would have been doing something so i would have, i would assume which is terrible um that they must have passed like ships in the night or, or some sort of uh passing and then you know maybe struck up a friendship that way and you know right yeah. Because they're both kind okay, of I think that, television. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably the more likely scenario. I just thought it's always interesting to know because it does sometimes happen the other way around and that can be quite interesting, you know, where there's two friends mm. and then they go off and then... And that's interesting because that indicates that there was something critical about the circles they were moving in or the discussions they were having, which yeah. obviously resonated in a certain way that this would happen. Whereas if they kind of both did their own thing and got big and then got connected i mean that's obviously that's just a, something that would always happen right i mean yeah. if you're the mr rogers in wales then you're going to know the mr rogers in england as well yeah it kind of it kind of reminds me of like um you know when you're talking about all those um guys uh, like that started what was it was it paypal or was it x.com you know uh and, you know it was like musk and Peter Thiel. Yeah, that's right. There was a couple of others that just yeah. all went on to have a massive success. And that's you're right. kind of wondering what was it about that little that's you know, right. like incubator that, that yeah. generated that. So yeah, I, I'd be yeah. interested to hear. Uh, it was hear the, about that. I think it was the precursors of, to PayPal and most of them were involved in PayPal as well. And then mm. they kind of all went off and did their thing. Yeah, so I'm kind of, I mean, I'm definitely interested to see. I mean, anything who's called the Mr. Rogers of whatever, the fact his name's Mr. Dress Up, that implies that he dresses up. Okay, okay. So I did a tiny bit of research, uh, and I think I think you kind of, uh, I need to spell some things out for you because we, we do have a channel that's a bit spicy, you know, like our, our um, uh, theme song has kind of notes of kind of a, a soft pornographic what? of course it doesn't just, just to kind of indicate that we're not these stuffy intellectuals but we you know we're just kind of um you know just guys talking about professionals talking about uh education um and he has come something called a tickle trunk and <laughs> when he says a tickle trunk 
rich. He doesn't mean a elephant trunk that he tickles kids with. He means a uh, a trunk as in where he keeps costumes. Okay, because I, right. I, I, don't, I don't want your mind <clears throat> going certain directions. Yeah, right. <laughs> New as directions. They say, <laughs> as they say, it's not the mouth it comes out of, it's the mind it goes into. Yeah, that's really good, really good. Yeah, so he has this tickle <laughs> trunk, and from there he gets lots of, um, you know, distant costumes that he dresses up right. with and does imaginative play. And we, we we all kind of um, know, I mean, we all, but yeah. I'm just saying this is a broad statement, that that um uh what is the einstein quote is the play is the highest form of learning uh something nice. like that um and so his stuff is kind of a lot of imaginative arts crafts storytelling and it's kind of done with different costumes and you know different scenarios i think he's got puppets as well right. and stuff like that um but yeah I'm, I'm excited to kind of see i think I, I i think i'm getting the idea now yeah so tickle basically means funny mm -hmm. play entertainment yes yeah. and the trunk is is the chest and so he transforms into these different characters which of mm -hmm. course is something that appeals to kids loads of tv shows in the 90s are based on that idea hi there you are and i've been oh, sitting here waiting for old. you i wonder and if this is a later here. episode and i'm really glad that i'm here <laughs> at least i think i'm all here yeah i, think I like so. how they talk directly to the camera you do that i heard something maybe it was a woodpecker it sounded sort of like a Oh, oh, somebody knocking on the door. Well, I'd better go see who it is. There's, there's a bit of an X factor here with, with these guys sometimes that mm -hmm. I've seen people try and do this sort of thing mm -hmm. and it just sounds so coy and cheesy and doesn't come off. Mm -hmm. But he's doing it and it sounds like almost natural. You know, it's I not quite there natural. Is, there it's is a, a bit talent like... to it, isn't it? Dude, talking, yeah. talking to character, uh, talking to camera and being natural like and not kind of like thinking oh i'm talking to someone but actually treating the camera like you're talking to this kid or something like that it does i think it takes a certain imagination that you're uh that you can imagine like an audience in front of you or a specific child uh, but and, it's it's yeah. also getting so that balance to... just right mm -hmm. yeah it's getting the balance just right of like over emphasizing a little bit but not doing it too much and i think a lot of people do it too much too Oh, oh yeah. there you are, kids, blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's a bit too much. And it's just like, just getting it just right. Yeah, there's, there is a certain, there's definitely a mastery to it. I can, I, I can immediately see some qualities of, of why. I mean, all of, all of this is kind of a very similar setup to Rogers. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if this came after and they just copied that or if it's just kind of like, the confines of the time it made sense to do it this way yeah wonder who it could be nice to have a visit it's mark hi mr Hello, dress up mark. hey it's good nice to, see, to you. see you you too well come right in and sit down yeah mr rogers used to do this exact stuff didn't he yeah <laughs> and he would have like the postman come out i remember specifically the postman and the the like slide Ooh. yeah yeah okay make yourself comfortable thank so, you very uh, much are you in the neighborhood fixing somebody's refrigerator or radio or TV? No, like no, not today. Today oh. is not a fixing up day. Oh, really? Today I came to ask you for a very special favor. Well, great. What can I do for you? Well, I was wondering if I could borrow a costume from your tickle trunk. You see, uh, well, I'm going to be on television today. You're going to be on television? Yeah. That's wonderful. What do you know, yeah, it's interesting just comparing the subtleties between these two guys. And you can sort of see just on a very subtle level, you can see the kind of expertise of Mr. Dress Up and how he's just balancing that line. And then the guy on the left is going over it. Yeah. And he's like overdoing it. He's a little too, uh, I, I don't know. He's kind of wooden. He's, he's come. He's well, he's not, coming across. Comes, he's coming across like, yeah, he's coming across like the kind of I've memorized he, my lines. He, he, <laughs> children's party entertainer. Yeah. Right hey kids you know whereas yeah mr dress up just a little bit more natural mm. i get the feeling like mr drep that he, he's he's the same like mr rogers he's the same on camera as he is off camera to some extent yeah i think there's more of him in the character than there is of this guy in his character yeah yeah that's true you know my friend peter yeah 
Well, he and I are going to sing some songs together on television. Oh, it sounds yeah. great. So you'll fun. need something special to wear. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I have my tickle trunk. I know. And I'd be glad to show you. Do you have any ideas, by the way? Well, that's want? the problem. See, I know that you are an expert on costumes, so oh. that's why I came to you. I have nothing in mind. Well, we'll just see what's in the trunk. Okay. Go from there. And uh, there's always something in here. Let me help Almost you open course. this up. Thank you very much. Wow. Now, we've got all kinds of hats. Okay. Uh, and we'll hats are really this. good to wear for shows. For instance, we have this. Maybe you'd oh, like to wear that. that, and you could be a sea captain. Okay. So the tickle trunk's kind of like a Mary Poppins kind of thing. Yeah, it's just like bringing things, things out from there. Yeah. Right. It's okay. Okay. I think, I, yeah, I kind of understand that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a... It's a... It's, it's a an un unlimited dimensional portal to new possibilities. The, tar the TARDIS of, of, of that's uh, right. costumes. <laughs> yeah, that's a lovely that's a lovely display of stuffed animals he's got there in the background as well. <laughs> yeah, someone someone has carefully put that together. Yeah. Hmm. No, I don't think so. This this isn't quite what I had in mind. Well, Maybe something that. different. There's okay. more. There's more. Now, oh, this is always good. You can always have oh, fun. Oh, look at that. I, I could be a firefighter. I, yes. I could work in a big city uh -huh. and, and, and hold a hose, maybe, and, and put out a fire. That's right. You've got red suspenders on. But I, I don't know any songs uh, about fires or firefighting. Oh. Not not even one. That is a problem. That's, that's, yeah. Well, don't worry. There's more. Oh, this is something. Uh, oh, I know what that is. Underwear. That, that's a hat that, that a chef or, or a cook would wear. Yes. Yes. Looks good. Oh, it? but I've got the same problem with this. I don't know any songs about cooking. Oh, that's too bad, too. Hmm. Well, th but it looks great. It feels good. Oh, let's see. Maybe, maybe something job of, like, different. fostering creativity and imagination. A cap. Now, a lot of people wear caps of different things, playing baseball, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. you could wear the cap and you could almost sing almost any song with it. You could be. Yeah, I like how simple it is compared to stuff these days which would be so like it would require all kinds of visual transformation these days wouldn't it it's like i could be a chef and then they'll put on some graphic of a chef or whatever yeah but like, you know all they're doing here is just yeah just put in there and i think there are there are them. there are times and places for that but here i think what when you do that what you miss out on is um this interaction that they're having so this kind of positive relationship of like them going kind of like oh i like there's this and then him going oh i'm not sure about that and then mr dress up kind of like oh well do you know a song like do you know this song or do you know that or something like that and then they kind of have mm. this back and forth and they go through and they're selecting different costumes and they're problem solving and coming up with ways um, to imagine the scenario and how it would work and would not work and it, it provides good models for kids of uh, how they would go through this process if it's just flashing up on the screen then there's no element of that and especially yeah. when you're interacting <clears throat> in school, you're doing maybe a group project or just, you know, you know, having friends over and you're trying to play dress up, then you're going to have this interaction. If you don't have any kind of model, you're going to model through. And, you know, sometimes that works out. Sometimes it doesn't. But this provides that positive way of kind of doing that. Yeah, I think there's something to be said for encouraging kids to use their imagination as well so you know to imagine things rather than just rather than putting the images in their head like yeah waiting to be told to form their own images yeah and it, it's something that it, it it does have to be learned it, it's it's astonishing yeah you know the you know when i'm looking at my kids or you know when i've taught kids is they, they're, they're a tabula rasa. They, they are really a, a blank slate. You know, like they don't know how to sleep. Um, <laughs> you know, like they have to kind of figure out how to self-soothe to get back to sleep. You know, if they wake up, uh, they don't know how to feed themselves. They don't know how to go to the party. They just don't know how to. I mean, the big one is they don't know how to control their emotions. And that was one of the things that I loved so much about watching Mr. Rogers was he was providing 
good effective models on how to regulate yourself which is one of the most important things uh, for really young kids to learn because it allows them then to do more academic learning or have better social interactions because they can go oh i'm mad but i'm not gonna punch someone i'm gonna you know i'm gonna what i'm gonna do with that mad that i feel i'm gonna punch uh a pillow i'm gonna stomp my hand uh, stomp my feet or clap really hard and stuff like that um it's it all needs to be taught not and it doesn't need to be taught explicitly but they need to have good models around them and one of the one of the things that mr rogers and mr dress up it seems that they do is they provide these good positive models and I, i'd love to see more of that nowadays and there are there are stuff out there um but this is so soft and nice uh, and thoughtful the way that yeah. they do it yeah yeah be a uh, uh, a workman a workman kind. okay be a farmer you could uh, maybe a farmer a, a truck driver a truck driver yeah. that'd be a great idea we, we we could pretend uh peter and i could pretend that we were driving trucks Let's and, try it out. and we could sing a truck driving I'll, song i'll pretend that i'm i'm peter mm -hmm. and uh you're mark and we've got trucks here let's try them up we'll go okay. driving right along moving right along always moving on highway going my way yeah again it requires a lot of imagination this doesn't it this is where you're now okay we're on the highway we're in a truck and they're not providing any visuals at all other than the cap. Mm -hmm. I like it. I I actually I actually really like that. I think the the scope for people to criticize that and say, well, why don't they hold up a picture of a truck? That'd help as well. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think there's there's something nice about encouraging the kids to do the work a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because I really think, especially in the modern day, I think there's a, a real danger of making immersion too much of an experiential process rather than an internal process. Mm. So it's like, I'm going to provide you with the surround sound, the amazing visuals, everything. All you have to do is just sit there and vegetate and you'll feel like you're there. Mm -hmm. And there's something to be said for that. It's very relaxing. Mm -hmm. But then also there's that idea of, well, picking up a book and going into another world. Mm -hmm. And some people find that very difficult. And I think the reason for that is because they've just always been presented with the easy vegetable option. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with that. And I, and I see that. And it's kind of like one of the issues with all these adaptations of books you know like you with harry potter the the movies are done so well um that it's just you know like this is presented of this is what harry potter is and if you don't read the books you don't get that experience of how you imagine it or how the writer wanted you the originator of this you know story wanted you to imagine it or give you and it's funny how you kind of come to different um concepts of stuff and i think yeah you do have that and it it loses that layer that you talk about of you know creating in your head and not being passive there's an element of active imagination that you need to utilize when like reading books and it's almost it's like a soft skill that you that you get when you read a book you read the book you get entertained but also you practice imagining but when you're watching a a movie of the said book you're just seeing everything all presented for you that's been imagined for you so you you like that training of your soft skill you just get the entertainment um yeah, I, th I think there's definitely something to that. I'd, I wonder if there's anyone out there that has any sort of research or um, any sort of comments uh, as to if there is kind of like some sort of studies that have shown differences, you know, between those, you know, readers and those that just kind of passively take media in. 
Mm. I'd love to find that out. Yeah. Maybe we should spin on a little bit and see kind of where this is going. Because, you know, they often take a leisurely pace, which I like. Okay. So what's this? So spinning on, it looks like there's some sort of arts arts and crafty drawing thing. Do you want to see that? Or do you want to go further? I'd like, I'd like to see how they transition and okay. kind of see where that goes in. So the end of this little yeah, segment. Yeah, let's see. There's something that you can trade. I can find something around here. Oh, oh that'd be great. You'd be willing to do that for Certainly. me? Certainly. Oh, sure, Mark. well, thanks, Mr. Dress up. Okay. I'll see you in a bit then. At the trading post. Okay, bye-bye. <sighs> well, that's good. I think, hope you find something there. All I have to do is find something that I know Chester would like for a trade. Oh, I think I've got it. I think I've got it. We were just talking the other day. Chester told me how much he likes little uh, toy model animals, and he especially likes giraffes, he said. And I have a way of making a giraffe out of just one flat piece of cardboard, and I think that's the kind of thing that Chester would be interested in. So I'll, uh, I'll give it a try anyway. Okay, now what you have to do is mark the different things of a giraffe, like the legs and the tail and the long, long neck. Just make them all on this flat, cut them out, and then you fold it in a certain way, and it looks like a, a giraffe standing right there. So I'll start out. All right, so I think we'll there, be... there I would put like a, an image of kind of the end result along mm. with kind of him explaining. <clears throat> but, you know, that's just me. Just because I think the kids would kind of be, could have something to kind of work towards. But, um, you know, the explanation works fine by itself. No, I, I, I agree with you. I think it would it would be quite well there. It's the whole, here's one I prepared earlier style yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. It? Yeah. So, so he does this uh, craft. That, that's yeah, nice. he does the... can... How long does that take? So um, what? five minutes. Five minutes. <clears throat> so you, they could actually see what I would do if I was going to do a show that would involve crafts. At the very beginning of the show, I'd probably have like a prompt of like stuff that you would need for you to do it along with them. That would just be like kind of a concept uh, yeah. that I would do. Uh, It'd be good for like the parents, prompt. wouldn't it? Exactly. Because yeah. he's obviously doing mm. it at a pace that they can do it at if it's like right. five minutes. So right. why would you not allow them the chance of doing that with you? Especially at yeah. this time where it's that's not pre-recorded. Yeah. Um, yeah and it's all point. live. But just a, just a suggestion, Mr. Dress Up. I know you're I probably agree. dead now, but <laughs> someone, take, <laughs> someone watching this going, oh, I'm kind of, yeah, I don't, you know, maybe I want to do something like this. There you go. Yeah, he probably is dead, actually, isn't he? Yeah, he died 23 years ago. <laughs> So, okay. rest in peace. Um, and let's go. <laughs> <What do you... laughs> I, I'm. Oh God. See, this is this is where I, this is where I, it's terrible show because I'm like, he's probably, I, I wonder how he was buried. Was it was it in the trunk? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut that. This, cut uh, that. Uh, no, I, no, sorry, <laughs> I, I think people will understand. I'm a terrible person, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so next section, we're going to go into the other fella. Oh, he gets quite an extended. This, I mean, is this guy a co-host? Because he gets like a massive section there. I guess he's. I don't a... know. I wonder if there's like a <clears throat> like a regular friend, like a Mister Freely. Uh, right. I don't know. Probably just a character that appears often. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll work on this a little bit more, and I'll see you later. Chester was right. There sure are a lot of costumes over here. I should be able to find something I can wear. I found an astronaut's helmet. This is kind of neat because uh, I could pretend that I was an astronaut shooting off into outer space. And uh, so Canadian. But there's there's a problem. This if guy is significantly worse, isn't he? I'm sorry to pick on him. I mean, he's not bad. Yeah. It's just the it's just the comparison between him and Mr. Dressup, like. He's like umming and erring in an unnatural way, just showing that he's not 100% certain on what he's saying. And he's definitely overacting in the way he's doing it. Maybe but, he was being groomed as, not, not in that way, Rich. So sort of the replacement. As like a replacement. <clears throat> yeah. I've, yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know, but definitely doesn't have it refined as well. Wearing a space helmet, how could I sing with the helmet on my head? That wouldn't work. Look, a skin diving mask. Now that's neat. A skin diver is, is a person who could swim all around underneath the water and seeing all kinds of fish and things. That would be neat. I, I could swim under the ocean and, and, oh, look, there's a tuna fish. And there's, oh, there's my good friend, Benny the Lobster. Hi, Benny. Hi, Mark. How are you? Well, why don't we sing a song together, Benny? Okay, you start it. Uh, Benny the Lobster's voice is pretty good, I've got to admit. <laughs> I can't sing underwater. That wouldn't work at all. Oh, I was sure that was what I wanted to be, a skin diver. Right, okay. Uh, so this guy does his thing. Yeah, for... let's see what, what's his... Is that, what's going wait on a minute, is that a hockey mask he's playing? Play... <laughs> no, it's baseball, that one. Oh, right, okay. Hockey. It's like, I think it and, the, and then I can... <laughs> or I, I, people have been like trying to aim for the slat with the puck. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the, then it's him. This, is, this is to give Mr. Dress up, <clears throat> dress up a break. He's probably having a nap or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I I get the feeling this is definitely... Oh, we got, we've got a puppet later. here. we got a puppet. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, sure. And it's a trade. Oh, that's great, Mr. Dressup. And now I'm, I'm going to be an engineer on television today. Thank oh, you. Uh, there's just one problem about problem. this, Mark. Yeah. Well, your friend huh? Peter called right after you left. And, well, he said that he's got a sore throat all of a sudden. And uh -oh. he's not going to be able to sing on the television show with you. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. dear. Well, I was looking forward to being on television. Oh, that's mm. too bad. Well, maybe you could find somebody else to sing with you. Oh, I wish I could, Chester, but... I, I don't think so. Chester. You see, I'd have Who's to find Chester? somebody who likes to sing. Yeah. And who is not shy. Chester's the, the little the, puppet. The puppet. Okay. Yeah. And they're all doing it for him, right? There's something about Chester. Because it was like, oh, Chester. Chester loves giraffes. Right. Et cetera, et cetera. It's interesting that they've got the puppet here oh. because, you know, in with the Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, they very much divided, didn't they, um, between the real world and the land of make-believe right. so here is kind of it, it's conflated it's all together it's, i mean yeah. obviously it's not a you know mm. bird doesn't do that so it's all together i wonder oh. i wonder about that one i wonder what mr rogers would have thought about that like it's not in the mr rogers framework yeah to you know like mix more... imaginary and real world <laughs> yeah dun 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 not not yeah. to say that you know it's necessarily <clears throat> bad because you have like sesame street and you know that's well, obviously these, way more uh, erroneous these but... days these days the the blend between reality and fiction is just it just seems to be there all the time doesn't it but i wonder if there was something to i'm more interested in whether there was something to the mr rogers way of doing things mm -hmm. you know maybe it's good to kind of separate fiction and reality a bit more you know you've that got was one escape. of his big things you know like he went uh, onto the set of um, Incredible Hulk, you know, the TV series, um, and showed uh, the behind the scenes because he was really worried because one of the, there was a, a spat of, you know, um, when Superman came out, like in the 70s, of kids like jumping off the roof and stuff like that. <laughs> and he wanted to kind of show that, you know, the difference, this is not real <clears throat> and you can't do that. And yeah. But, you know, I, I don't know how savvier kids are nowadays. Maybe something that should be that way. I don't know. Well, I think I think these days kids have to be. I think from an early age, they realize that there's a difference. But it's always something that people struggle with, isn't it? I mean, you often hear about how there's the actor who plays like the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And when people see the actor in the street, they're like, Oh, uh, you, you know, like treating him like he's the actual, like uh, EastEnders actors, I think, who played like the bad guys in EastEnders, they often got quite a lot of abuse. Oh, really? Because people would just think they're the actual character. It's like K-Fab, you know, like wrestling, you know, like where yeah. but they're going around trying to pretend, you know, like Ric Flair's like, is actually a millionaire and, you know, like beats people up and flies around the world. Uh, well, he kind of is now, but, you know, back in the day or, you know, like, um, 
now it's kind of is reality the K five of reality being stripped away? I don't think so because um, you know I think a lot of people now struggle, especially with online social media, with the way you know like stuff is presented because you can go on Instagram and present this mm. uh, ideal life, right? And some people might think that that's how someone's life is, but uh you know the reality is, is it's not it's just you know it's a curated look so you know i wonder okay so maybe it's more obvious nowadays to kids that this is you know that's a puppet and it's not real but what else are they struggling with uh and what else could be addressed by a young television a television show like mr rogers that could kind of cover that that kind of could i wonder how mr rogers would deal uh with you know like photoshop and talking about these imagined presentations on instagram and tiktok of these ideal lives and how he would present that to kids nowadays that i think there's definitely a uh a need for that yeah yeah it's possible that there Maybe is for adults too <laughs> and and it, it might be the fact that this is you know, because the technology was just sort of coming about in Mr. Rogers' time, and it could well be that this is an unresolved issue, really, that we haven't we haven't fully dealt with, and it and it's sort of getting worse. But it's something that's compounded into the ongoing rapid development of technology and humanity's inability, really, to socially adapt and behaviorally adapt fast enough. So it's a very, very tricky situation, really. But it, I, I do feel like there's some there's a need for something like that, especially when it comes to social media. But we've got all kinds of things in the pipeline as well, like virtual reality and... Oh, yeah, Jesus Christ, with AI like and um, the, the way that you uh, can generate like avatars and uh, as you say with virtual reality it's going to be harder and harder to really distinguish what is real, what is real basically uh so i you know i i would love to see a, a modern day mr rogers type show that uh that would address that but they, they i think one of the issues would be is really determining and nailing down what is positive and beneficial and what is destructive i mean yeah yeah i mean the same same with stuff <clears> like uh you know what everyone hopping on about misinformation i'm like well okay but one person's misinformation is another person's you know like correct information is actual information how do you distinguish and you know the way the 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 uh process that you use to distinguish what is that and is that correct you know it's kind of like that choice of, it becomes like a, a morality thing where it's like um you do you, who has the right to decide if someone lives or dies <laughs> who has the right to decide if this is correct factual information or not because we've talked about this before we've talked about with statistics how they can be skewed manipulated how do you know like we could just say just because it's one study says this doesn't mean that everything uh, you throw out all the, the the you throw the baby out with the bath water it's it's so complicated i think that can come under a, a similar banner in a mr rogers framework though yeah. where it's sort of like the ultimate source of truth is you and your real personal experience right now mm -hmm. and then other things you know there's different levels of trustworthiness or reality based on other things and in early years, this sort of dichotomy that he presents of real and fantasy is just the beginning of starting mm. to understand that or to form a concept of something like that. Yeah, so he's kind of building a foundation, uh, it's a, foundation. A, gro a groundwork before he goes into basically what Rich is saying is, you know, to live your truth. Something like that. I mean, obviously, you know, he's a children's educator, so it's not his job to then go further beyond that. But yeah. it might well be a solid foundation for something like that. Whereas 
something like so, this. So uh, ma- a foundation of uh, developing kind of like critical thinking, or a foundation, way, or... a foundation of developing an idea of something gro- grounded and true versus something which has an effect but doesn't have as much truth like complete fantasy mm-hmm. and separating that in such a way that it at least gives you a base reference for what it means for something to be grounded and true versus what it means for something to be fantasy because fantasy still has an effect it doesn't it's not meaning that fantasy is just totally fictional and doesn't involve doesn't influence anything actually it still has an effect because mr rogers actually the reason why he had those fantasy things is because they had some utility right yeah like they helped understanding things and they helped you deal with things and then here we've got this slight mix but then if you fast forward to more modern children's tv there's a really strong mix Mm -hmm. and i remember actually when like the teletubbies first come out there was a lot of criticism of the fact of what the what is this and <laughs> yeah. why how can this help kids like is this really healthy for kids yeah. that they're watching like this totally bizarro fictional world like they're not humans there's almost no there's in fact to make it even more confusing they have some elements of being babies but also they they they're not they're totally fictional in that way So if anything, it's kind of very confusing and there's sort of an idea of should it really be like that or should would it be better to have like someone on screen, a person, you know, Mm -hmm. and we've kind of moved away from that, haven't we? We've moved away from like the person on screen communicating and now, you know, there's some children's TV shows. It's just like blobs, yeah, (laughs) these weird blobs in space floating around. Yeah, no, it's it's an interesting rabbit hole to to go down uh i'd love to have some sort of um you know, research that we can reference and you know maybe someone could comment below and uh, point some things out to yeah, us yeah it'd be great to talk to someone who yeah really or even have this. someone come on yeah yeah definitely um, because i think there's a, a lot to unpack there um but it's it's definitely interesting and it, it's out there and it's having an effect and is it regulated no <laughs> apart from parents going yeah. it's basically down to parents to go i don't think this is good could be good for my kid or not and it's based on that just kind of feeling really i guess because there's no from my understanding is not much research on on that so you know you're just kind of taking your best shot which is a lot of the time so you when you're a parent so how how are they going to wrap this up then because they've done a, a decent job of transitioning between the different segments and building to something so how does that work in the end so there's a okay Seems like it gets pretty, pretty spacey. Let's... <laughs> Mr. Mr. Dress up. So they, it looks like they do kind role. of a thing where they do the Chester and him in the train, and they must probably do that song. But what's all this about after it? Right, the clown knows. There it is. So and now let's see if I can get the costume. Here. Mr. Dress Up, really living up to his name. Yeah, that should be all right. Well, I think I'm all ready. Wow, hey, Mark. Oh, 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 I hear them coming. All right, well, I'm going to get ready to do my television show. Oh, I right, Mr. okay. Dress up I wonder yeah. where he is. Mr. Dress Up? Uh, Mr. Dress Up? Mr. Dress Up? Where are you? That's really strange. You know, he said he'd be here when the show was over. I wonder. <laughs> hey, did, did you hear that? Yeah, came from over there. It came from here somewhere. <laughs> it's coming from right in here, Chester. Hmm. <laughs> oh, gee, it looks like him. It looks like a television. I know it does. It looks oh, like. Push one. the button and see what happens. I'll try. 
<gasps> well, hello there. <laughs> it's, it's Mr. Dress Up. <laughs> on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, well, Mr. Dress Up. What are you doing on television, Mr. Dress Up? It's easy. I'm a clown. <laughs> I like being a clown in the circus, but fun for everyone, especially me, because I'm he who the clown in the circus. <laughs> I like painting my face in the circus, blue streaks along my cheeks, and red paint goes all over my nose. Right, so uh, random clown song. And do, for some do you reason... kind of feel like they kind of got to their end and they're like, ah, shit, we still got five minutes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> is this, yeah, is this filler? it's um, the whole thing is a bit sort of loosely cobbled together, really, isn't it? I, you know it's what? I as, fit... It's not as coherent and it yeah. doesn't feel as well planned out as the Mr. Rogers stuff. It kind of feels like they got an idea and they, yeah. they ran with it and then, you know, maybe they, they ran a bit out of time. What I feel like is that they have a scaffold, mm -hmm. which is something like narrative introduction with sort of messing around with the with the with the trunk, like mm -hmm. taking things out and trying them on. Mm -hmm. Crafty section, mm -hmm. then like puppet, and then like separate scene. So we've got like the put that bit that we didn't watch, which is like the puppet and the other guy doing their train thing, mm -hmm. which if anything is the main narrative glue to the whole story. Yeah. It's this idea that, I don't know, Chester wanted to dress up and do a, do a show or something. Yeah. I bet that, are they singing? Yeah, probably. So the go-to, the go-to filler is to do a song because yeah. hey, kids love songs, right? And then outro, I guess, because there's nothing, there's nothing really, special about this bit is though over the mr dress up dresses up yeah he has his idea to do his, and... his own thing that's you know <laughs> he can't be yeah. outstaged by the main narrative <laughs> <laughs> that's it yeah he's like are you guys gonna do your thing <laughs> okay well let's that's why he's always me, gone like let, let, let me just nuke that <laughs> <laughs> yeah he goes for the full you call that guy. a knife take a look yeah. at this <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh you've worn a hat and you've got a little train great well, I've dressed up like a clown, so <laughs> deal with it. Plus, I'm going to have you guys actually stand there and watch me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So, I think we can. I think we can say that. It, yeah. So it's it's not as narratively coherent as Mr. Rogers, mm -hmm. and we criticize it some ways. Yeah. I. I. It's just um, the Mr. Rogers one is just so meticulously planned it feels like you know like the perfect lesson plan that it's mm. like done down to the minute if you were if he had the script and it was uh, the equivalent of a lesson plan and he went to some sort of invigilator or whatever and they they, they say it, they'd be like oh this is this is exactly how it should be taught on the the celta or delta course or something like that is it, yeah you know it's just great um yeah and i do like how it it but it does have that um overall repetitive routine and structure um that mr rogers have i do like mr rogers i think the way that mr rogers has done it is is really helped with that coherence because he has the trips to never um to the land of make-believe and he also has the the same segments uh throughout the time you know feeding fish and stuff like that but he also goes out into the real world too so i think the way that they've baked that cake is it fills the time well um whereas here like you said it's kind of it looks like there's more of they have a, a narrative a story that they want to tell and through that story they have to do a, a dress up uh a um a craft and a, and a song and kind of tie that up at the end and i i it, it would seem to me that you know i've not seen all the episodes but that they they will have a bit of time at the end to kind of feel if it that narrative doesn't they can't expand on it that much more mm. yeah but i do like the element i do like the crafting element uh, I would like to have seen them have something at the beginning of the episode to indicate what they would have for the crafts. So, you know, like what they could do is 
they have the a, a chart up at the beginning that shows what they need to do a craft a day and that kind of be for the parents the parents can then go and gather all that stuff in the five minutes that they do all the uh, narrative setup and go through all that dress up stuff and then by the time that it's um, coming to the craft part they can do the the kid can then do the craft with the um, with mr mr dress up and then they've they've got that and then they've got their little craft and then they're able to hold and do that craft along with the people on the tv that are also holding theirs and doing that song it just it makes sense yeah and i think I I, I I i agree with you about your criticisms and i feel like this is basically someone taking the mr rogers formula and then trying to replicate it and doing a fairly good job but also not actually understanding it yeah and i'm not saying that i understand it the point is that mr rogers understands it yeah and so he has a rationale for all the things that he does and he puts them together in a certain way mm -hmm. and this is kind of like oh that's what he's doing right let's copy that but they don't maybe it doesn't have quite the same it's like the the difference between having um t teaching techniques and having a, a more of a pedagogical mindset you know like i don't know if you've had this but you know i've had new teachers like saying oh i need i need some uh activity to do or something like that and you'd be like oh you try to do popcorn reading or you know you can do you know like uh you know chase run to the board or you can do you can do uh and you give them like an activity and then they just kind of like put all these activities together and the and you know it, for some reason they're like oh but the class didn't work and you're like yeah because there was no there was no structure to it. there's no rationale of why you were using that particular activity apart from you thought it was cool or you thought the kids would like it it has to be part of a, a broader um framework and it has to be put in there for it, uh, in a in a way that it makes logical sense you don't build a lesson around an activity you build a lesson around you know a uh, a learning goal right um oh, I'm, I, you could build a lesson around an activity and you know it might work out um but that's not kind of the point it's missing the point really isn't it i think that's a fairly good analogy the the idea of activities and tagging things on and i think it does this show feels like activities glued together mm. which you could break down mr rogers into like different sections a bit like that as well but the the there's something which holds it together in a lot more of a kind of a coherent narrative yeah and it's not and with mr rogers it's not just the one episode it, it it's the whole week it's connected right. so some segments connect to the whole week some are contained within the episode the way yeah. that it's just all structured it, it i mean you know that's why i call him a teaching master is because yeah he he's thinking in such a, a meta broad way of how he wants to go with the show i wouldn't be surprised if he had just a, a, an overall master plan for the decade <laughs> mm. yeah yeah perhaps yeah it's yeah. that's the difference i guess okay um well so i would say mr dress up you know two thumbs up still great you know still um wonderful for encouraging um creativity uh, imagination providing um wonderful models for positive social interactions bit of craft lots of routine you know I'm, I'm sure they'll probably have stuff of like um involving inclusivity and all that sort of stuff and uh, i'm not sure if they have as much like emotional social development as mr rogers it seemed more focused on creativity but you know overall I like it. It's just he's not at the same level as Mr. Rogers. Mm. He's he's just so far above. Yeah. Yeah, there was it definitely felt like it was more entertainment mm. with a bit of as you say creative 
encouraging creative development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, I'm not really sure. We didn't. Did we see any sort of like moral lessons or lessons for life in there? Maybe we just didn't see that bit. But it didn't really yeah. feel like there was any of that, was there? It was just like, oh, Chester wants to do this thing, so we're going to do it. It didn't feel like there was layers. No, mm. no, not in kind of like because um, you know the, and I think that's may maybe also with Mister Rogers where it comes from his ministerial background. You know, like there's these parables and stuff like that it kind of feels yeah. you know like when you have like the parables you've got the story but then you've got like the underlying meaning you know, i feel like that's what you got with mr rogers you had like yeah. a story but you also had yeah. a, this underlying meaning um, yeah there was a reason he was trying to like teach something deep teach or preach i'm each. not sure anymore <laughs> well what's the difference but he's Ooh. trying to give a deep a deep lesson he was trying to get a deep lesson across yeah. as well as just entertain and educate as a service level. Whereas here, I'm not so sure. Yeah, we, I'm I mean, not sure if we're Mr. Not... Dress, Mr. Dress Up was really trying to uh, get in deep with his tickle trunk. <laughs> of, of course, we do have to provide the disclaimer, one of many, that we, we are just watching part of one episode. So you know who knows it's yeah a, and these a, are just our opinions um they yeah. are you know what we consider educated professional opinions but you know we'd love also love to hear from you folks out there um what were your experiences with mr dress up uh do you have any a any opinions on um the difference between mr rogers and mr dress up do you disagree with our thoughts uh, on that and if you want to come on the show and just let us know um we we'd love to hear from any particular professionals that were influenced by this um and how they took that into their teaching uh what you should do is contact us at elt under the covers at gmail.com or go to our website or just leave a comment below and let us know but Rich, is there any final thoughts that you would like to leave us with about Mr. Dress Up or just in general with these, these types of shows? It's the poor man's Mr. Rogers, isn't it? <laughs> no. Um, spicy, that, spicy, but yeah, that I think a, that's uh, more or less what we're kind of, we're getting at really. A little bit, a little bit. I mean, the very poor man's. And um, yeah, it does, it feels like carbon copy a little bit carb as in the thing about a carbon copy is that it's it's not the original yeah you know it's like it's taking the surface of it and so we've lost some quality there it's a zero which is an important thing to note what i would say is i've got <laughs> i have got a comment about how we need to present this video this needs to be like Mr. Dress Up better than Mr. Rogers question mark with the thumbnail. So uh -huh. if you've just watched this video and that was the thumbnail, then uh, you've been clickbaited. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadian better than the American Mr. Rogers. <laughs> um, something like that. Yeah. yeah. But the the answer is definitely no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, can you say that to, can you say that again in one sentence and i'll put that at the beginning so you right. can just say just like mr rogers the, is he better uh, oh, is, is mr dress up better than mr rogers the answer yeah. is the well no. the question the real question is is the canadian better than the american is mr dress up superior to mr rogers and the answer is in no way shape or form <laughs> in my opinion and maybe not even close i mean i'm not saying he's bad mr rogers that's, is just really good that's the problem isn't it it's you know like we're not we're not saying he's he's terrible by any means at all he's really good and he's better than a lot of the stuff out there yeah especially he's just his not mr rogers especially, <laughs> especially his communicate i mean what what i can really compliment about mr dress up is his communication with the kids is yeah. good and i commented on that before that he he really gets into that line of kind of a little bit exaggerated and excitable but not 
too unreal. Not like, hey, kids, here we are. Like, it's like, oh, right. yeah. okay, that, that's the cheap children's party entertainer, okay? Yeah. So we want something superior to that. So, yeah, his communication with the kids is good. But I think where we're, where we're mainly criticizing this is the underlying rationale and as, you know, as teachers, we would call it, pedagogy mm -hmm. the teaching the the theoretical side doesn't seem to be as good and as a result the whole thing doesn't doesn't glue together as much and we're missing that that message yeah 100 percent. thanks for watching folks let us know in the comments below if you're looking for more information um, from myself, uh, you can go to teamteacherchina.com. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of materials, PowerPoints that you can use instantly in the classroom. We've got a Team Teacher China YouTube channel where we have videos teaching you how to use those uh, materials. Team Teacher English where we put those materials into a, a video form for self-study. And Team Teacher Baby where I take my experience as a teacher and put that into parenting. And go to YouTube the Conference Professor Rich to see some English teaching you can catch me weekly live streams on Oxford online English YouTube channel oh and also you can you can do a YouTube search for POG space UK and you would get my alpha version of my new gaming channel which actually just have some trial content on there at the moment you can email us here at elt under the covers of gmail.com if you have anything you'd like to contribute to the show smash that like button share and subscribe and, and watch 100 of the video and don't exactly. click off thank you <laughs> bye